Kia ora. In this video lesson, we are going to be talking about finding the shortest path through a network. So after completing this, you'll be able to define what a weighted network is and identify the shortest path between two vertices. And you're going to be able to justify your answer with Dijkstra's algorithm and the weights of a network's edges and the justification will be needed for higher levels of achievement. Okay, so what a shortest path involves. Now what we're seeing is there are weights, or in this case, distances. How far is it from one vertex to the next? Those are the weights. So rather than guessing and checking what the shortest way is, we are going to look at a very specific way to do this, and that is Dijkstra's algorithm. Let's have a look. So here's what's going to happen. If you have more than one, uh, when you go from one node to another, what you're going to do is the following. So from A to B has a distance of two, and this 2A is telling us it was a distance of two and we came from A. On this side, A to C, it was four and I came from A. Now, if two different arcs go to the same node, you will follow that. 2 and 5 is 7B because I came from B. From C to D, it was 4 and another 4, so 8 from C. But I cross out the longest one because I want the shortest path. That's how we're going to be doing this. Okay, so if two edges visit the same vertex, that will get two markings. When this happens, we pick the marking with the least weight and ignore the other. For example, in the following network, there are two edges leading to D, one from B and one from C. Two and five gives us seven from B, hence the seven B and the eight C, four and another four give us eight, and you only want to keep the shortest one because we're trying to find the shortest path, okay? So for this one, we're going from A to B with a distance of three. So we would have a three A right there, letting us know that was a distance of three. B to C, it's already been three, plus another four gives us seven, and I came from B. Okay, so that you would continue all throughout until you got to the end. Let's have another look here. Next one. So as we said, A to B, was a distance of three. That's the only way to get to B. So three coming from A. Next one. I, I would consider go alphabetically, please. Go alphabetically. Next, from B to C it was three and four, which is seven. And to get to C, I came from B. Next, three plus five gives us eight. And I came from B. Going along with that, after C, there is D. 3 and 5, 8 from B, D then from E. We've got 7 plus 7, 14 from C, but we can also go from D to E. So 8 and 2 would be 10. 7 and 6 gives us 13 coming from C. But here's what we notice now. This 14 from C was too big. You want to keep the shortest path. We keep continuing to do that, getting to H. Now we can go F to H. 13 and 3, 16, 10 and 4, 14, or 14 and 3, 17. So we cross out the big ones, keeping the short ones. And now we know the shortest path. Finishing at H came from E, so back to E, then to D, back to D, back to B, and back to A. There is our shortest path. And always a good idea to add those up so we can see the shortest path, okay? So the shortest path was A, B, D, E, H. And by adding all those up, we had a distance of 14, all right? There's a nice introduction to finding the shortest path. We're going to do some more of those in class. Thanks for listening. Please send any pot time my way. Maori mahi, Maori ora, ka kite anō.